Am I the a-hole for not taking in my in-laws and not helping them with medical bills? Plus update. Original post. I, 24 male, do pretty well for myself. I have my own place, a stable slash boring job that doesn't require much of my attention and pays well while I work from home. Have plenty of hobbies and buy nice clothes. Just in general have a pretty comfortable life. My fiance, 26 female, moved in when we got engaged about two years ago. Important context is that everything is on my name. And she doesn't pay rent, only bills specific to her. Like buying the things she likes to eat with her own money and helps with some of the utility bills. About 10 months back, my father-in-law, 56, was diagnosed with a pretty curable case of lung cancer since he had an early-ish diagnosis. But my in-laws don't have the best financial condition, and these months of medical bills and other expenses might see them homeless and father-in-law without money to stay on his treatment. Important to note that my in-laws have always treated me like trash and were always openly against my relationship to their daughter, to the point where they'd explicitly would tell her not to bring me to family gatherings and invite her ex, things of this nature. And yes, she had my back and stopped attending said family gatherings. But she still loves her family and they mean a lot to her. So she asked if we could take them in and help her father with his treatment. To which I said no without thinking twice. She asked if I can't think on it for a few days and I replied, if I think on it for a few days, I'll only be more sure of my already obvious conclusion. They're not setting foot here and I don't care what happens to either of them. She replied saying something along the lines of us having the income to spare. And that is true, but around 70% of it is my income, not hers. And space, which is also true. She asked me if my hobbies and spending money on myself was really more important than her family. And that kind of got me annoyed since I spend a lot of money on us. Not just me, although sure I have a few hobbies I spend on. To which I simply said, yeah, it is. Now, my fiancé didn't blow up at me or anything as she's not one for conflict, but she called me an a-hole and has been staying last couple of days over at her parents. She still calls me before bed every night, but is still clearly mad at me. Very, very mad. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Since a lot of people asked and some pointed out it could be important info, I come from a Japanese family and she, her family and her ex are all African American. Also another frequent question is if I know why they dislike me. I don't. They won't say anything to my face ever, but have disliked me from day one. And I know that they argued with my fiancé because of me several times, especially in the earlier days. Not the a-hole. Have you suggested that she contact her ex to help him out? I'd die on that hill if I were you. Stay strong, brother. Pretty sure he said the parents-in-law invited her ex for family gatherings, no? So many comments are completely crapping on the fiancé and family. Whilst the OP is right to not want anything to do with the family, it's not entirely fair to just dismiss how the fiancé is feeling. Her dad is ill and could potentially die. Irrespective of the ill treatment, she clearly has feelings for her parents. Facing mortality can stir feelings in anyone. I don't think OP should stand down, but a bit more diplomacy wouldn't go amiss. You're right, I don't think she's the a-hole, her parents are. But the thought of death clearly has her worried about her father, even if she knows he's an a-hole and has taken my side before. Also, my delivery on the message that I wouldn't be helping was pretty terrible. I should have been more tactful even if standing my ground. Not the a-hole. If fiancé isn't paying any bills other than her personal ones, she should have a fair amount of disposable income that she could leverage to help her folks. Certainly, no responsibility of OPs. The in-laws have made it abundantly clear that they don't consider him family, so it's quite rich to now turn around and expect what would be considered a familial obligation. Not nearly enough, and she hasn't been the most diligent about saving money over the last few years. Not judging, it's her money. So the financial side would like fall mostly on me. So she didn't slash couldn't save money? Because not judging, it's her money? You saving money and paying the bills and giving some to people who were or are hostile she calling you an a-hole is on you. A life could be very long when she depends only on you while earning money and still spending it all. Red flags. To be fair, Opie didn't say what she's planning to do with her finances now that things have changed. Lots of folks immediately jumping to Gold Digger where all we know so far is a woman who earns less than her fiancé. I did in another comment. She seems to have stopped with the frivolous purchases and started putting whatever little money comes in towards her dad, but it's not nearly enough and they'd need a significant sum up front to stay afloat. But only now that crap hit the fan, 
Not when we first found out about the cancer. Now for the update. Well, yesterday, father-in-law and mother-in-law were at the doctor's the whole afternoon, so my fiancé came over for a talk and said she understands why I refused to help them and said that being at their place just over a few days reminded her I was completely in my right to not care. As even in bed with cancer, her father won't shut up about her breaking up with me. She apologized for having even asked in the first place, as they don't deserve it even if I was willing, her words. She also said that while she was angry at the way I spoke about her parents possibly dying slash being homeless, as many of you suggested, I apologized for the way I spoke. She was angrier at herself for being just as financially irresponsible as they are and not having any money to help them herself. I pointed out a bunch of issues with her financial decisions that she agreed had to change and she asked for my help with teaching her to be more financially responsible. She asked if I felt used for her not paying that much around the house. I said no, but if it'll make her feel better and help her make better financial decisions, we have a couple more bills around the house she can pick up but told her to only worry about that after her father is done with treatment and for now just keep helping them with her money. Then I spent a whole bunch of time explaining to her all the different resources, social programs, financial aid, and charities her parents could reach out to, like a lot of you suggested as well, thanks. So they can stay afloat while her father gets his treatment and just gave her some general financial advice. I also found a buyer for their house below market but still, they get the money they need and can move into a cheapish rental that fiancé and her parents can split the rent for now. Sounds like a standard case of racism to me. Parents don't like him because he's Asian. Glad he put his foot down firmly and early. Yeah, if after all this time the parents or the wife can't give one concrete reason as to why they don't like him and he still hasn't a clue what their issue is, it's definitely racism. They can't give him a reason because they know what the reason is. It's a matter of not wanting to admit it out loud because they know it makes them look bad. A lot of African Americans, I'm African American myself, can be racist but try masking it as only prejudice. Still, it's the same thing. They just think one word means less harm being done but being prejudiced can apply to all backgrounds. Sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to just give it time to work itself out. And also by not rushing into any life-changing decisions based on a heightened emotional state. I'm glad they were able to work it out by communicating honestly and giving it time. You know, by the end of this story, I was rooting for this couple. No big fight. He understands that she wants to help. She is mad, but even running off to care for parent calls every night. Comes back in three days, acknowledges his feelings, apologizes and then asks if he feels used. She then asks for help to learn financial skills her parents failed to teach her. Meanwhile, he has resources for her to look into helping her parents and tells her to use her money to help them. Good communication skills, deep friendship, even Angry wants to help each other. Sweet update. Yeah, not to mention that she's putting her money where her mouth is, so to speak. She moved her money from spending on herself to spending on her parents, then asked him, which is relatively reasonable since she's contributing what she can. But he's also well within his right to refuse of course and it's nice that he's still offering to support with finding resources and ways to help am i the a-hole for pointing out my girlfriend's hypocrisy when it comes to cheating i have been with my partner for two years and she's always been vocal about how much she hates cheating and it's something she could never forgive etc after her ex cheated on her one of my friends cheated on his partner and my girlfriend rented for a while about how awful he was Again, I agreed that he shouldn't have cheated, etc., and didn't try to condone his behavior. My girlfriend went out on a night out with three of her friends, all of them are in relationships. The next morning, my girlfriend was talking about the night and kept talking about how one of her friends kept going up to random guys, dancing with them, having her arms around them, and she said it looked like she tried to kiss one of them, but they said no. My girlfriend said all of this while joking about the night. I mentioned that her friend's a cheat then, or at least trying to be, and that I feel bad for her boyfriend and that he deserves to know. My girlfriend disagreed and said she isn't a cheat since nothing happened. So I asked my girlfriend if she would be happy with me dancing with random women on a night out and trying to kiss one of them. And she said no, but that's different. I pointed out that she's seeming to condone cheating when it's her friends or when it's women cheating. But if it's a man or someone she doesn't know, then she is immediately disgusted by cheating. I pointed out it's double standard slash hypocritical of her to say she hates cheats, but then brushed past her friend trying to cheat on her partner. 
She said I'm wrong and that I'm out of line for calling her a hypocrite. Am I the a-hole for pointing out my girlfriend's hypocrisy? Not the a-hole. Your girlfriend sounds pretty immature if she can't see the double standard there. No, but that's different. Is the definition of double standard. Happened twice to me. My ex-girlfriends got drunk and didn't remember making out with someone at the club, but their friends told them the next day. But they didn't remember, so to them, it wasn't really cheating. I don't play those mental gymnastics anymore. I've been drunk beyond belief, but I've never made out or anything with someone else while I'm in a relationship. If you can't control yourself, you shouldn't be in a relationship. I have two male friends with similar reasonings, it's hilarious. One thinks if he pays a hooker, it's not cheating because it's buying a service and done. No feelings involved, all good. The other days, getting blown is not cheating as well because her wife doesn't do it. I know they don't cheat, but every time they say this between beers, I ask them what if it was their wives doing that. They of course don't like it. Not the a-hole, but your girlfriend sure is a huge hypocrite and provided you with a huge red flag. So on the bright side, at least she showed you her true self before you married her. I think you need to have a bigger discussion with your girlfriend. Seriously, OP seems kind of casual about his girl condoning this nonsense from her girlfriends while saying it'd be different if OP did the same things. She's suspect like a mug. I'd watch her closely if I was him. I've been around a while at 50 years old, seen my share of hypocrites both male and female. They all have the same thing in common, every one of them. That thing is, they're also cheaters as well as hypocrites. I wouldn't trust any hypocrite as far as I can throw them. Fact is, she'll easily make excuses for her own crappy behavior when it happens and it will. Am I the a-hole for saying I would only have kids with a husband? I work in a very casual restaurant. Like, boss takes shots with you after closing restaurant. So this type of conversation isn't even extreme. My coworker Katie, 19 female, was telling me about some baby daddy drama that her sister Annie was going through and that he cheated on her with a friend of hers. I, 23 female, immediately said, that's crazy. That's one of the reasons why I will only ever have kids with a husband. Another coworker Paula, a girl in her early 20s, got offended and started asking me if I thought single moms were trashy or bad parents. I immediately told her that I didn't, but when I have kids, I want to have a completed degree, a house, and a husband before I birth any, and that I prefer to have them with a husband versus a boyfriend because someone who has made a marriage commitment to you is less likely to cheat on you with a friend. Plus, I don't want to knowingly put myself in a situation where I raise kids on a single income. Then Paula replied, so you think my babies are suffering because I'm a single mom? And I said, hold on, I don't know anything about your kids. I'm just saying that for me personally, I will not have children for a man that's not married to me. She looked upset for the rest of her shift and then left a bit early. When she left, the other workers reassured me that I didn't say anything wrong and that I must have hit a nerve because she's a single mom. But like I feel bad because my mom's a single mom and maybe she felt judged by me. She probably does feel judged constantly. That's a her thing, not a you thing. She also probably sees how much better her kids could have it and feels guilt. She's also probably exhausted and stressed and not thinking 100% clearly. She lashed out at you for her issues, not because you're an a-hole. Not the a-hole. I mean, I would objectively agree that children of single parents are worse off than those from complete loving households. Full stop. And that lady is the a-hole and knows she is or wouldn't be so defensive. It's the loving household part that makes it better. I've seen people stay together that shouldn't have because they didn't want to get divorced and it was a horror show. 100% divorce would have been better for the kids. Also, one parent shouldn't bounce just because they are no longer with their partner. Co-parenting can still work and give the kid a loving home. Not the a-hole. You were talking about your preferences and she took them personally. It's a her problem. Absolutely. My mom was a single mom and I definitely agree with her logic. She wasn't even insulting single moms. To pretend it isn't harder to be a single mom than having a committed stable partner is just absurd. My mom was a single mom, which is exactly why I chose not to be. Yup, my mom is a single mom and told me not to have kids unless I'm married and in a committed relationship lol. Not the a-hole for your personal preference, but it's really naive of you to think that marriage would stop someone from cheating on you. There are men who have babies on their wives 
or divorce them never wanting anything to do with their children again. Anyone could be a single mother and have a baby daddy with co-parenting issues. It's wise of you to want a higher education before you have a child though. Some people overlook that and completely rely on their partner. I don't necessarily believe a marriage will stop a partner from cheating, but I feel like it's more unlikely for your longtime husband to cheat on you while pregnant versus your boyfriend of two years. That's just my personal opinion. Like if I'm having kids with a husband, it's because they're planned and wanted versus accidental pregnancies. Also, do y'all only know a bunch of cheaters? Cause I know plenty of long-term married couples that haven't strayed from each other. Like cheating on your marriage partner isn't the norm in my social circles and you're probably going to get shunned if you do. Don't worry what bitter Reddit people say about marriage. It goes south for a lot of people because they get into it with the wrong ideas. Reddit also seems to avoid saying anything too supportive of traditional family structures at the risk of offending other communities. Without question, your best odds of a stable life for you and your child will be through marriage and not random uncommitted partners. Doesn't mean getting married shields you from a bad marriage. Gotta get that part right.